Hello everyone, I'm Angela and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited because it's the first day of the BASR conference and this year it's going to be at my university, Glace Trinity University. So the BASR conference is the conference held by the British Association for the Study of Religions. So I'm very excited about it. So hopefully I will be able to film bits of it so that you can have an understanding of sort of a day in the life of an academic conference edition, I would say, because of course um, the life of an academic is very different day to day and it can involve research or teaching or going to conferences. So in this case it's going to be a conference, so uh, stay tuned for this a day in the life of an academic conference edition. This is my office, which is now full of my things, of my equipment for filming uh, this conference. So, yeah, welcome to my space. So this is the registration area, it is the first place you go to to collect your badge and all the information regarding the, the conference. And I'm supposed to be behind it, so I'm gonna get back to work. Usually there are academic publishers at conferences and they display the latest research outputs and also in some cases give you the opportunity to talk to them and perhaps get a publishing contract with them for a monograph or um, an edited book perhaps. Hello, it's me again. So it's the second day of conference um, and I feel a bit more nervous today because I'm actually presenting a paper. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. And I'm also trying to fill my paper. So if, unless it's complete rubbish, I'm going to upload my paper as well on, on this YouTube channel. Oh, I'm extremely tired. It's still the second day of the conference and now there's the, the assembly of the British Association for the Study of Religions and yeah there have been quite a few panels since this morning but unfortunately I was not able to attend any except the one I was presenting in because I recorded a few interviews that are going to be up on this channel in the next weeks. So let's now take a moment to address how academic conferences work. There's basically an alternation of social moments where you can talk to people, to researchers, net, do networking as they say, and uh, panels. And also there are uh, special events like for example the keynote. The keynote is usually a very esteemed researcher in a specific field who gives an uh, a longer talk, so it's not the same as a paper. The keynote tends to be around an hour and it is in a, in a big auditorium because uh, everyone is, is attending the keynote, whereas when you have the, the panels, usually there are multiple panels happening at the same time, so you may have two or three panels happening at the same time and normally what you do is to look for 
the one you're most interested in and you go to to that one and you leave the other the other two out unfortunately what often happens is that there are certain time slots where there are no panels that really interest you or are relevant to your research and other time slots where you have like two or three panels that are all extremely interesting and you'd like to just <laughs> be in multiple places at the same time so that happens so yeah you do have this alternation of social moments and you attending panels which are comprised of um, three papers usually uh, every panel at least in my field, uh, I, I, I wouldn't know whether in other fields it'd be different, but I imagine that the um, structure of an academic conference would be quite similar. Every panel tends to last about an hour and a half. You have, um, as an average, three speakers. So every speaker has 20 minutes plus 10 minutes um, for, for discussion because if the paper was a good one, <laughs> as they say, you will get questions afterwards. And so it is good to leave uh, a bit of time for, for discussing with researchers and other colleagues that want to ask you questions or sometimes um, just point out something, make a comment or suggest you a reading to, to move forward in your research. So. Um, the kind of comments you may get can be really helpful. There are some cases where you can get criticized or challenged uh, after you've delivered the paper. That can happen too. Luckily, the BASR is quite a friendly conference, so it's, that is unlikely to happen. But there are cases where a conference is, uh, a paper can be heavily challenged. Um, by other scholars in the field who believe research has not done properly or they have um, conflicting data and so they want to point that out. Another important thing to explain is what are the, the panels which are basically the core of an academic conference. So normally a panel is um, a set of papers organized together by theme. So when there are three or four papers that uh, have a similar theme, they get organized together in a panel. Sometimes uh, scholars can um, propose a panel, so they can decide themselves to be in a specific panel with a specific theme and propose to the um, conference organization that specific panel with those people and with those uh, topics. Otherwise, if you submit a paper, a singular, an individual paper uh, for a conference, you will be um, added to a specific panel depending on um, the themes that emerge from the other papers. And what is a paper then? <laughs> a paper is, um, uh, is a small study, we may say. Uh, sometimes it can be a case study or, um, yeah, basically it is um, a study that sometimes, quite often, uh, gets turned into a journal article for an academic journal. And it is um, a study based on data that may vary depending on, on your field. A paper is a study that you have conducted and that you are presenting to an audience. Um, there is a, a good chance when you present a paper at a conference that um, the, those who organize the conference or other people may ask you to submit a paper proposal so that your paper will be turned into a journal article, which is normally what we want <laughs> as academics because you know, publications are kind of vital for us. They even say publish or perish, which is very dramatic and very true, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so that is what a paper is and a panel is. So you have many opportunity to network and meet scholars in your field. This is very important for two reasons if you want to be an academic. One, 
because of course by networking you can create uh, job opportunities uh, both in terms of publications and of course if there's um, a job opportunity that opens up and uh, somebody in your field knows that you are an expert in that area they may of course ask you to um, send an application in. Even uh, opportunities for publications which are essential for academics. Also another important reason for networking and knowing other scholars in your field or in uh, similar fields to yours is that you will learn more about what you're studying uh, because everybody of course comes from a different, even slightly different approach. They may have read different publications, different books, so they may have like suggestions uh, for you, or things to read or things to do, or other scholars you may want to speak to. And in my case, of course, uh, most scholars are much more experienced than, I'm, than I am, so they may have advice and suggestions regarding uh, how to advance in my career or how to do field work or even like practical advice so it is I strong I personally strongly strongly believe in human resources and in the um, value and help that uh, we can give to each other so yeah I do feel that networking is paramount not only as an academic but in general I believe I strongly believe that. And the third reason is that uh, you may get new friends. <laughs> uh, it has happened to me. Sometimes uh, scholars in your field, colleagues, can become your friends. And um, yeah, it doesn't always happen. It is a fortunate um, occurrence if that happens. But yeah, it has happened to me uh, quite a few times. and. Yeah, I do like when it happens because, I mean, we spend so much time doing our jobs that if our colleagues are also our friends, we really hit the jackpot. So, yeah. Once again, uh, this is the third day and final day of the conference. And, yeah, the conference has just finished. And, yeah, it was a special one for me because... Uh, it was my university and so it was very nice to have all the, the scholar friends uh, come here. Today it was, um, it was shorter than the other days, so in the morning there was a, there was a panel, which unfortunately I have to miss. Um, then there was the coffee break and the plenary session with a round table. Uh, where basically all people uh, attending were discussing all the themes that emerged from uh, the different panels, which were uh, the, um, the, the patterns emerging and the main theme. And it was il really interesting that what um, was noticed, since this, com this conference theme is uh, about media and religion and the relation between the two, um, one common words that emerged from most papers and most panels was reality and that was pointed out by a colleague here from Leeds Trinity University and I thought it was really interesting and I agree because I've heard the term <laughs> being repeated quite a lot these days and I think that the online presence is quite challenging um, what is reality and what is not because even though we tend to perceive the online as something abstract or not real it is becoming <laughs> very real for most people so yeah I guess that perhaps the use of social media the use of the internet is not just challenging our concept of reality but reshaving it perhaps so um, yeah I found it very interesting if you like this video smash the like button subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for all the academic fun bye for now